Oh yeah, camera's in a new spot tonight, by the way. I'm a little less intrusive. <laughs> Whoa, look. Yes, yes, I know, Ellie. Fireflies. You are welcome to tag me in chat as I play this and ask me questions about things that are happening with like the characters or whatever. Uh, I'm happy to answer those, by the way. If I miss your tag while I'm playing this, it's not because I don't care. It's just because sometimes it's, it's awkward timing. So if you need to re-tag me again down the line, by all means do that. Fun real life fungus facts. Systemic fungus infections are actually very difficult to cure because fungus are much more similar to our own cells compared to bacteria so any antibiotic type drug that works on them also nukes our own cells jesus i'm so glad yours was just bacteria um mine was bacteria and viral it was, it was both but i'm glad it wasn't fungal either now that you said that careful where you put those boards yeah no shit Alrighty, here we go. Here's where we left off. Hey, you, Bill. Where do you usually meet him? Huh? Different places. You've never been here, have you? I know this is where he lives, but no, I ain't never been here personally. And that smoke, you think that's him? Sure as hell better be. Well, let's go check it out then. All right, come on. So in, t in speaking about attachment, we'll, we'll, we'll do this as the starter for this run. In speaking about attachment, I think at this point we could probably hypothesize that Joel is dismissively attached. One of the hallmarks of dismissive attachment is that when closeness is demanded uh, or desired, it often makes that person anxious because People were not generally reliable. A lot of times people who are caregivers will tell you that they were caregivers because others were not reliable to assist with that endeavor, so they had to do it themselves. And so anytime we see a bid for closeness from Tess or from Ellie, we see Joel immediately push that away, probably out of a sense of, you. there's no way you're reliable. I can't rely on you for my emotional needs. I can only rely on me. And we've seen that a couple times with Joel. Ellie, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not really able to say yet where she would necessarily fall. But all right, let's get some supplies. Let's get the old brick. Um, is this a blind run? Yes. Down here. Let's watch your step. It's a good drop. Mm, did y'all hear that? I don't like that. I heard something that sounded a little like a clicker. I hear groaning and grunts. You don't know how to whistle. Well, does it sound like I know how to whistle? That's probably the worst possible thing you could want to learn right now, Ellie. I want to learn a thing that makes more noise. That's what I that's what I want to do. I want to I want to be loud when there are things that we know hunt with sound. Give me a second. So I guess Joel's just going to ignore that. Well, uh, you know, good luck with that, but I'd rather you didn't whistle. Why don't we wait until we're in a, in a safe house or something? A 
right. Got some bullets. Some gear. Got some some foul. Anything else good in here? All right, come on, Ellie. Now stop trying to whistle. Not into that right now. Ellie! Ooh, get out of my way. Ellie, move. Yeah, no kidding, Asdi. If we ever live in an apocalyptic world, don't count on conveniently placed 2x4s just laying in the right place for you to cross. Come here. Hey, you make your own 2x4s. Oh, shit! Stay back. He says stay back. She does the opposite. Oh, shit. Can I shift this guy? I was close. I bet the pinks were getting a little sweaty there. Sir, get out. Excuse me. Can I make another shiv? Increases your health. Listen mode, distance, Hurry. crafting speed, healing speed, weapon sway. Reduces weapon sway. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in on that. I hear another guy groaning. <sighs> what are you guarding? You worth killing? Are you worth killing? I don't think you are. I just see bottles. I think we're gonna we're gonna move on. Come on, Ellie. Nothing to see here. Sorry about your condition, sir. They are blind. Scary. But they cannot um they're they're blind so they, they hunt by listening. I'm not I'm not gonna fight that guy. I don't wanna I'm not gonna burn through my shivs on <laughs> worthless clickers I need it to open doors there you go loud ass doors yes good yeah give me give me give me, give me. oh yeah I'm full on hunting rifle ammo how can come on Joel can fit all that other shit in his backpack but not two more bullets Champ on the other side. Here, boost me up. Uh, that's not such a good idea. Well, I can't boost you up. How else are we gonna get over there? Joel, is that some concern I'm seeing, sir? Give me your foot. Now listen, just open it, okay? Nothing else. Uh, sure thing. Easy, easy. Okay. Okay. Ta-da. Good job. Thank you. All right, a little positive reinforcement there. Good. Um, Ellie doesn't really sound like a fourteen-year-old. Does the game presenter as an adult, but bigger, uh, or but uh, smaller? So Ellie. Uh, so let's say we get a car from this buddy of yours. Then what? Well, then we go find Tommy. Marlene said he's your brother? And more importantly, he was a firefly. He know where to take you. Oh, okay. He lives far from here, which is why we need the car. More importantly, a firefly. Joel sticking all business. So, I mean, growing up in this environment... We don't really know much about Ellie's parents' situation. She talks about it a little bit, but she would have to grow up pretty fast. Like when you when you grow up in these kind of circumstances, you don't have the luxury of being a child. 
Like, you've got to be hardened and resilient. It's the only way you survive. And so we could hypothesize that she's had to be pretty gnomes. rough around yeah. the edges. Those are gnomes. Man, I had an art book filled with these. I always thought they were super cute. <laughs> Not fairies, though. They creep me out. All right, man. These are little vulnerable moments, man. This is the kind of stuff when you have these little playful moments that facilitate connection and camaraderie. And Joel seems hesitant to take that in, which I think makes sense. Like, the the more Joel engages in that kind of conversation with Ellie, the more connected he has the, the risk in his mind of being to her. And the more connected he is to her, the more his desire to take care of her grows, the more his desire to take care of her, the more a very vulnerable aspect of his sense of self comes out. Potentially some of that, I've failed at this before. And we're gonna see some of his coping mechanisms as it relates to that, theoretically, as that happens. So we would expect to see Joel still be pretty hesitant in this. The thing is, Ellie doesn't have the contextual understanding of Joel being cold in these moments. And so Ellie very well may personalize these exchanges and think that maybe it's something that she's doing wrong because she's making a bid for connection and Joel is cold. And if he does that enough, she's going to start wondering what's wrong with me. Maybe she'll say what's wrong with this guy, which is the more adult version of it. But a child would say what's wrong with me, which is why as an adult, you got to be very careful when children try to engage with you in that way, especially if you're their caregiver and reliable. I want to get as many supplies as we can here. Yes, I am, Hellraiser. Are you analyzing this game like you did with Mass Effect? Yes. Yeah, kids kids are egocentric. They have they have no other options. They don't have a wide, broad contextual or diverse contextual understanding of the way the world works. Adults do, and adults often think that children share that, and they don't. A child is going to look at your interactions and your coldness, and their first question they're going to ask themselves is, is that my fault? Not, is this guy a dick? Or does this guy have some shit that went down in his life that oh, makes him like look this? Look at that. The turning. Boy, that's, uh... Maybe it hits a little too close to home. This, this ain't a game. Anything else I can craft here? Take another shiv. You're making me feel bad for falling asleep on the couch while my niece reads me stories? It happens. That's that's okay. Would you play this before? No. But I had a friend that knew everything about this game. Apparently, there's this character called Angel Knives who'd... What was it? She'd punch a hole through your stomach before kicking your head off. <laughs> well, I was never a big fan of these things. I wish I could play it. You too, Ellie. I wish you could too. Uh, it depends on the kid, madame. I mean, they could potentially have an like be affected by that, but it's hard to say without talking to the kid. But if 90% of the time you're available, there's a good chance that that's not going to be as damaging as you might think. Um... Yeah, this is all relationship building right now. Uh, there's like an upstairs over here. So let's maybe let's see what was upstairs. I wonder if the turning was an alt name for the game and this is an Easter egg. That would be kind of, that would be kind of hilarious. All right, what we got here? All these gears, this is gonna be helpful later for modding stuff. Can we get in there? No, but I still walked up there. Sleepy little town. This ain't so bad. 
Whoa, that clicker left. That clicker walked away. Mandatory evacuation. Evacuate to where? What do you think? Quarantine zone. See, some places got a heads up before the infection showed up. Most didn't. Man, must be hard. Just leaving all your stuff behind like that. That ain't the hard part. Yeah, losing your people is the hard part. Mandatory evacuation notice. All residents of Amherst County and all outlying areas are required to evacuate by 8 p.m. on 10 17 13. Please follow the instructions of designated authorities. All evacuees will be asked to provide identification and may be subject to on site medical testing. Any evacuees resisting official directives will be detained. Yeah, 2013 does feel like a long time ago. Almost 10 years ago at this point. Just crazy. I mean, you gotta remember, this game came out on PlayStation 3. I'm playing the remastered version of it, but... It's a relatively old game now at this point. Look how beautiful it still is. It's a testament to Naughty Dog's art design. It is excellent. Mandatory evacuation notice, evacuation route, evacuation... Evacuation safe zone will be awaiting evacuees at the following location. Lincoln High School. Alright. Anywhere else we can loot here? Marquee. I thought taking basic precautions was the hard part. <laughs> In 2020 it is. Look at this place. Oh, this is cool. If you sit down and bang on those drums, I'm going to be pissed, Ellie. Don't you even think about doing that shit. I know this is fun and cool, but, like, we got to survive, my friend. I understand the temptation. But we ain't doing it. Yes, Chaos, I will be playing The Last of Us Man, Part 2 after sad. we finish this. What is? All this music that's just sitting here. No one's around to listen to it. I don't know. It doesn't seem right. I would agree. If I had a record player. Hey, that was our daughter's favorite band. I wonder what would it be like for Joel to see that, knowing that his daughter was really into them. You know, you get these little memories. It sort of pulls that to your, to your, the front of your mind in ways you don't want it to. Goddamn infected, showing up much too close to the church safe house. Looks like I'm going to need to do another round of clearing out the weak spots of the perimeter. Okay. Very quiet. What is this? Jesus! Whoa, Nelly! What, what the hell was that? That would be one of Bill's traps. Your friend a bit paranoid, maybe? No, that's putting it lightly. What's the deal with this guy? Well, he helped us smuggle stuff into the cities. He knows how to find things. Well, let's hope we don't blow up trying to find him. Just watch your step, you'll be fine. Just watch your step, you'll be fine. That was a freaking explosive tripwire. Jesus, now I feel like I like I gotta be careful. 
Although I did see that one, which is nice. Another ship door, huh? Oh man, you gotta teach me how to do that. Someday, Ellie. I don't. Oh yeah. Gimme, gimme. That was a good decision. It cost me a hundred for weapon sway. Alright, let's go this way. There's another one. That's fun. Look at this guy with arrows in his chest. Jeez, feel good with a bow? I reckon he is. Uh, I don't have a bow to use that, but cool. This looks like a dead end. Stay low, Ellie. See that wire? Stay underneath it, okay? Just keep your head low and you'll be fine. What are you doing? Jesus Christ, Ellie, what was I? I'm giving you a directive and you just walk your ass right through it. What are you doing? <laughs> God. <laughs> just keep your dead down as she gets clotheslined by the tripwire. Holy crap. How about I just tank it, Joel? Why are you so worried when I can just walk right through it and be unscathed? Man, you think Bill's paranoid. How about you, Joel? Oh my god. <laughs> oh man. All right, you will be shot on sight. That's uh that's very foreboding. Holy cow. Uh, anywhere? Oh, here's the bow. Wouldn't that have been hilarious if I didn't pick up the bow? Yeah. Don't dry fire it, Joel. Let me use that. I'm a pretty good shot with that thing. How about we just leave this kind of stuff to me? Well, we could both be armed. Cover each other. I don't think so. It's interesting because from a survival standpoint that might be smart although if ellie panics and starts shooting or something that would be bad hard to say whether that would be a good idea or not i could understand joel's resistance to that i it would require a lot of trust it's all clear come on up all right I mean, yeah, I could have not. I could have not picked it up. I wouldn't trust her with a bow either. Oh, yeah, right. After you, after you tank a landmine, yeah. All right, what do we? Uh, how do we get across this. Ah, shit is right. Mm. I know. God damn it. God damn it. I hate when games make you push forward to go down ladders. Oh. Here. We can actually use this. Give her a shiv and to only be used if she's grabbed. Not a bad idea. I mean, I do think she needs to be armed. Then again, you know, one does wonder if maybe that's some of Joe's, Joel's caretaking coming out. Basically him being like, nah, I'll shoot. Because not only do I want to be the one that makes sure I protect you, but also because I want to protect you from the, the guilt and the 
the stress that comes from murdering somebody, even if it's a clicker, it still, you know, was once a human. And that's a very big responsibility for a 14-year-old to take on, to kill somebody. She did stab that dude with no hesitation. I, I, I do agree. At the same time, that didn't kill him. Oh, God. What's up, man? You don't hear me coming down this ladder. Um, they call me Quiet Joel. I'm Quiet Guy. Okie dokie. Okay. Oh boy. All right, now Ellie. Ellie, lock it up. Lock it up. Look at me. You see that thing? You see that thing? We're not tanking them. Okay? We're not tanking them. We're going to stay down. We're not going to hit our head on it. We're going to go under it. This is no time to limbo. There you go. Proud of you. Also, what's that pounding? Oh, Jesus. You hear that? Yeah. Now, survival tells me I shouldn't go in there. But the looter in the survivalist in me tells me. Shit, you're gonna go in there? I wanna see what we can find. You're gonna find my body when I die from a heart attack. Don't worry. I got this. Way to show some confidence, Joel. All right, Ellie, I want you to stand right here. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. I gun out just in case. It's okay, guys. A Navy guy lives here, and Santa's been here. Yeah, no, I think I think listening mode's lame. Ellie, this is not the time. This is not the time. What are you doing? God, I love your appreciation of music, but not right now. I don't need you whistling and humming and shit like that. Santa's watching. Oh, shit. Jeez. This thing scared the shit out of me. Well. I understand. While we're here, let's All search right. the place. Holy crap. All right. Hopefully that's it. More gnomes. Rachel. Rachel. Note to Rachel. Rachel. Soldiers are going door to door, forcing people onto buses. I hear yelling a couple of buildings down. Time's running out. I tried calling, waiting. I don't know what to do, but I can't wait anymore. I've thrown most of our stuff into a couple of suitcases. I'll be waiting for you in the quarantine zone. Come find me. I'll see you soon. Ezra. Do you think they ever found each other? How the hell would I know? Well, I'd like to think they did. Ah, uh, yes. The idea that they would find each other is maybe a little bit tough of an idea to swallow, given that we've 
really lost everybody that we ever would have wanted to be hanging out with. Was that guy taking a shit when he came running after me? Was that all that guy needed to do and he just got spooked? I'm sorry, man. Honestly, I don't feel that bad for killing those guys because it really seems like it puts them out of their misery more than anything else. Like, they're not really human anymore. Yeah, let's go. No trespassers. No, we're not getting through there. Or are we? Look at this. Well, that's it, chat. We're done. We can't go any farther in the game. That's walled off. I guess we're just going to try to make camp here. We're going to try to wait this thing out. So it's been really fun. This has been a great stream. Thank you for hanging out with me. All right, stand back. All right. Things are kind of awesome. There's one way to do it. Nice. Ooh. This guy's not looking great. You waiting on somebody? Okay. I keep trying to talk to those guys and That's Rachel. Oh my God, Gecko. Well, if Bill's here, he, he hears us coming. That or he thinks he's in for a long night of clicker killing. Oh. Just stay close. I'm glad that Joel continues to be directed. That's useful. Like, okay, we gotta go through here. Oh my God! I got you. Damn it, Bill! What just happened? Another one of Bill's stupid traps. There, that fridge, it looks like that's a counterweight. Okay. Oh my God. Cut that rope and it'll bring me down. On it. Come on, Ellie. Oh my God, Ellie, come on. Shit, here they come. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Trying to reload a gun while you're upside down would be ridiculous. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Oh God, it's a clicker. My God. Good time, Ellie. Hold on. Come on, Ellie. Please. <laughs> no, that's the opposite of what I wanted. Yeah. Come on, you can do it. Here, catch. Thanks. Damn it. Come on. Stay away from her. Hey, over. Oh my God. Oh God. Hurry, they're getting closer. Ellie. Get off, you 
There's so many. Oh! Oh my god. Get off of me! Get off your ass on your What's up, brother? Oh god! Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. Open the door, Bill. Bill, come on! Close it! Alright, let's go! Oh god! Oh my god. Alright. Come on, we're almost there. Oh, Reload. They're coming over. Come on! We're getting through. Keep going this way. Ellie, get the fuck out of the way! Ellie! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Thanks for the heroics and all. Uh, Ellie. Hey, what are you, Joel? Bill. What are you doing? Bill. Turn around and get on your knees. Just calm down a second. Turn around. All right. Get on your knees. Don't test me. Just take it easy. Right. Any bites? No. Anything sprouting? Oh, God damn it! I'm clean. Don't I see so much as a trick. Ow! Stop! Son of a bitch! You done? Am I done? You come into my house. You set off all my traps. You damn near break my shooting arm. Who the fuck is this punk and what's she doing here? I am none of your goddamn business. And we're here because you owe Joel some favors. And oh. you can start by taking these off. I owe Joel some favors. It's some kind of joke. I'll cut to the chase. I need a car. Well, it is a joke. Joel needs a car. Well, if I had one that works, which I sure as hell don't, what makes you think I'd just give it to you? Huh? Yeah, sure, Joel. Go ahead. Take my car. Take all my food, too, while you're at it. By the looks of it, you could lose some of that food. You listen to me, you little shit. No, fuck you! You handcuff me! I him. need you to shut up. All right? Whatever favors you think I owe you ain't worth that much. Actually, Bill, they are. Well, it don't matter, because I don't have a car that works. But there is one in this town. Parts. There are parts in this town. Meaning that you could fix one up. All right. I'm going to do this. There's some gear I'm going to need. All right. It's on the other side of town. Of course You it help is. me go gather it, and maybe I can put something together that runs. But after this, I owe you nothing. That's fine. A couple of days from now, we'll probably be dead anyway. Good. Follow me. Whole goddamn town's booby trap. Best stay right on my ass. Can't miss it. Knock it off. All right. Whatever supplies you may want or need, I suggest you grab them. All right, thank you. So now well, you are offering my food. We can use. All righty. Oof. Okay, well, <clears throat> you may be asking yourself, why is everybody so hostile? Why is everybody so on edge? Well, you, you know, when you are in this world, you learn pretty quickly, you can't trust shit. Even the people you like and know. It's survival, man. And I don't know if Bill's out here with anybody, but if I'm him, I'm, I'm probably pissed too. And then you bring somebody I've never seen before, you come in asking for favors? Yeah, I mean, everybody's going to be on edge. You you, you want to take control of the things you don't understand in a moment like this. So Bill handcuffing her to the to the pipe makes complete sense from Bill's standpoint. Keep yourself safe. 
you you take control right you can't you can't let trust be something that catches you off guard and then you end up dying in a scenario like this trust is all well and good when you know what you're working with but when you don't know what you're working with you can't allow trust to get in the way you have to you have to take precautions and then you act and you figure out what's going on from there that's that's survival the game changes with interactions when you get into a moment like this. And Bill is an example of that and the way that he handles that moment. I, I don't blame him one bit for doing what he did. Bill's map. Barricade, trap, convoy, nest, nest. Oh, well, that's fun. Okay. Got a long way to go. That pipe's better. And that scene's intense. I got this, Pinks. I'm gonna make sure you get paid today. Fences, no. Need to remember to clear the infected by the fences. Third time this month that too many of them were stacking up against the fence, knocking that shit over. Clear the fences. Bill's got a lot of shit laying around here. And I wonder why he owes me. Yeah, I've literally just kind of bulldozed my way through everything that Bill has created in order to have some peace of mind in his, like, station here. So even if I am a friend, like, I'd be pissed about that. I'd be like, dude, I, I spend a lot of time trying to keep myself safe and you just, like, this better be worth it, man. Shiv's upgraded. Chapter 4. Improved durability of blades. Sharpening. Sharpening a blade reduces the force necessary to cut or puncture, thus increasing the life of the blade. For improvised whetstones, look near bodies of water. Sedimentary rocks such as sandstone are best. Place the flat edge as close to the hilt as possible. Run the knife edge along the rock at, seven, at a 17 degree angle. Ah, yes, uh, because I carry a protractor with me at all times. If the something, something, blood or metal fire may be used to tune. No. Basically saying stealth combat weapons and tactical movement. Nice. Sior, you ever read that book before? Maybe you could tell me what that page says. Man. Hey, YouTube, thanks for watching this. If you're watching me on YouTube right now, I really appreciate you taking some time to watch this playthrough. And those of you that are here with me on Twitch right now, appreciate you being here with me live and spending some time with me tonight. I hope you guys are enjoying this run as much as I'm enjoying bringing it to you. Thank you very much for hanging out and being a part of this. All right, Bill. I got all the shit I need. need. Yes, good. sir. Come on. Don't leave the door open. I got it. We have to cross to the other building. Up the stairs. Let's move it. Just stay with me. Can't believe you agreed to this bullshit, Bill. What you should have done was just left him back there. You weren't kidding about him. Yeah, he's one of a kind. Again, you, you learn to be directive. In these moments. There's no time for bullshit. In some ways, I can appreciate it. Right? Like, you, you, we're just, here's what we're going to do. Here's the directive. Let's go. And Bill's talking. This makes me wonder if that's what he does in order to keep himself company. I don't see anybody else here with him. So, people talk to themselves when they run out of people to talk to or don't have anybody to talk to. They'll do it in isolation and whatnot because humans are inherently relational animals. So, when you're in isolation, you will start to have conversations with yourself and do kind of like a self-externalization just to have some form of social engagement kind of kind of fascinating to watch and so bill doing that to me is an indicator that he's probably been here by himself for quite a long time that or it's just kind of a normal like when we talk to ourselves like oh geez ryan where'd you put the keys but uh, eh, he doesn't strike me as the kind of dude that would necessarily do that for no reason let me take a look around up here nothing in there that i need go ahead take whatever you want thanks I saw a group of hunters coming dangerously close to town. 
Luckily, a pack of infected chased them off. Remember, put up more warning signs to let them know you're serious. I can't quite do Phil's voice, but I can try. Who are these guys? Or, or that Skog, yeah, for sure. Blood could be used as an improvised lubricant for sharpening a knife. Damn, that's intense. So what kind of trouble are you in? Where the hell's Ted? It's just a job. S simple drop-off. And what are you delivering? <laughs> that little brat? Ha <laughs> ha. Fuck you, too. <laughs> You know, I, I hope you know what you're doing. Are you kidding me with this guy? So where are we going, Bill? I got the safe house. It's more of an armory. Wait, I thought we were going to fix up a car. We? You know how to fix it? Bill, a... just... That's like I said, <laughs> what I need is on the other side of town. Now, that side I don't ever go to because it's filled with infected. So we're going to need more guns. More guns it is, Bill. I love that. We. <laughs> Joel just casually mentions that Tess is. He, he just kind of omits the fact that we lost Tess. Who knows the reasoning for doing that? It could be that it's just still too hard to talk about or that it's going to lead to a conversation with Bill about it. And having that conversation right now is not particularly useful toward our goal. Yep. <laughs> Emotional suppression and survival is really a theme in this game. Hey, look, it's that Marine guy again. Or not Marine, Navy guy. Swim away. Oh boy, I hear... I hear some infected folks outside. A baseball bat? Probably not as good as a lead pipe. Where are we going, Bill? Good. Oh, I didn't mean to take care of that. Relax, it's nothing. Look, you didn't answer my question about Tess. Yeah, I thought the two of you were inseparable. She's busy. <laughs> yeah, sure. Busy. <laughs> like, might be trouble in paradise. Yeah, something like that. Joel continues to be evasive. Again, makes sense to me. That kind of that kind of conversation is just going to be it's just too hard. So, why don't you fix one of these cars? Oh my god, you're a genius. I mean, the whole time, why on earth hadn't I thought about fixing one of these cars? Okay, don't be a dick. Their tires are rotted and their batteries are dead. Are you done? Can't even begin to think what the inside of the engine blocks look like. Only ones making new car batteries are the military. God damn it. Infected! Shit. Lock and load. Oh, shit. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. That clicker is not good. Oh my god, come on. Son of a bitch! 
All right, where's the clicker? There it is. Bill, get out of the way. Bill, are you gonna shoot it? All right. You gotta check the barricades again. You neglect the simple shit, and now you're paying for it. You know what that means? Taking all the supplies from the warehouse okay. and into the well, east. Now he's talking to himself. Again. Then it'll take Bill, you. Joel, this way. Hey, he's just he's processing externally. There's nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> Up we go. Hear yourself think out loud. Hear what it sounds like out loud. I think something that's worthy of note as well is that Ellie has some level of discernment in terms of what she discloses. I, I admire that she kind of knows that it's not really her place to disclose what happened with Tess. Because she could easily have said, you know, Tess died, Bill, shut the fuck up. Like, she could do that to be a dick. But instead of doing that, she's, She's following Joel's orders. So there's a level of trust there. I think that's reflected in the fact that Ellie is literally following Joel's instruction of do not talk about Tess ever, no matter the circumstance. And so hopefully that helps build a little bit of a sense of trust emotionally between Joel and Ellie. You picked a hell of a place to hold up, didn't you? You know, as bad as those things are, at least they're predictable. But normal people would scare me. You of all people should understand that. What does that mean? Nothing. It's a great line. Don't really have much to add to it. You sure that gate's gonna hold them? Well, I locked it. They don't have a key. I don't think there's any issue to, with it, Rotor. Also, sleazy, I see what you said. Yeah, you so and I are way? on the same page. We're here. It's in the cellar. Oh, well, that wasn't too bad. What's over here? Ah, look how pretty this game is. Oh. You don't touch anything. And you close the door. <laughs> Let's gear up. Uh-uh. What? I need a gun. No, you don't. Joel, I can handle myself. No. Just stay here. It's fine. Just wait around for you two to get me killed. Well, this goes on record as the worst fucking job you've ever taken. Yeah, it's up there. How in the hell is Tess okay with this suicide mission? It's actually her idea. Really? Well, the broad's not as smart as I thought she was. But, fucker. Seriously, you gotta take that kid back to where you found her. I can't just take her back. Then send her packing, let her find her own way. Look, let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, I had somebody that I cared about. A partner. Somebody I had to look after. And in this world, that sort of shit's good for one thing. Getting you killed. So you know what I did? I wise the fuck up. And I realized it's gotta be just me. Bill, it ain't, it ain't like that. It's bullshit. It is just like that. Hey! What I say to you when we walk down the steps? What I say? I'm just fixing your stupid pile. Don't touch. God damn it. You keep babysitting long enough and eventually it's gonna blow up in Bill. your face. Can we please just get on with it? Here. Let's get on with it. Thank you. 
There's a lot to unpack there. I think in some ways we're seeing Bill say something explicitly that Joel has passively indicated, which is that being connected to people is a liability in the sense that there's a good chance you're going to lose them. And taking care of somebody, being emotionally invested in somebody, means that eventually you're going to be let down. And the pain of that is so unbearable that you might as well take control of it and separate yourself and be the one who at least can say, I was the one who decided that I was alone instead of the circumstances dictating that I be alone through the person who I care about dying. And you'll notice that Joel doesn't really disagree with him there because that's happened to him on multiple occasions, the most recent one being with Tess. So Joel's reticence there, I think, is a reflection of understanding that what Bill is saying is true to an extent. But at the same time, that rubs directly against our human desire for connection and to take care of. And when it's a piece of your identity, which for many of us it is, we, we take care of the people around us, the idea that survival would be better in terms of its odds if we don't engage with that basic need is more cognitive dissonance. And we're going to see people take control and try to mitigate that dissonance in different ways. And it sounds like what Bill did was say, you know what? Fine. I'm doing this on my own. I'm making the hard decision now because it's better for me in the long run. Amazing what our survival instincts will do for us. All right, before we go any further, I got something I got to show you. What you got? New toy from the toy box. <laughs> well, I'm going to look around real quick for a second here, Bill. Let's see if you got anything else hanging out here. got this is a nail bomb now you got to be really careful this thing blows it shreds anybody standing nearby yeah I've seen your handiwork pretty good huh damn that's crude these powerful bombs explode when an enemy gets close. Used offensively or defensively, they can be thrown using left trigger. Arc throw or placed more strategically with right trigger. Undetonated bombs can always be retrieved. So we got shotguns and bombs. What the hell are we doing with them? Well, every few weeks, this military caravan rides through town. I assume they're out looking for supplies. I mean, you, you'd be amazed at the shit that they overlook. Anyway, a few months back, they were rolling through and they get overrun by this horde of infected. They were all over the truck. The plows right in the side of the high school. Still sitting there with a the battery in it. So we take that battery and we put it in another car. Bingo! I wanted to get it, but it seemed too dangerous with all the infected on that part of town. But fuck it. Joel needs a car. Hey, what if it's damaged? Nah. Those trucks are like tanks. It's just sitting there. Actually, it might work. I for sure hope it does. I don't know what the hell we're going to do if it doesn't. Let's grab more supplies. Let's grab, let's make another shiv, because that seems useful. Let's go ahead and upgrade that bad boy. Um, I don't know that I want to make another bomb. Oh, look at this good stuff. Oh, yeah. This looks like a good spot. All right, I got lots of gears. So, weapon holster. Holster for a second long gun. Holster for a second pistol. I want... Oh, I don't have the... Damn it.
shotgun, bow. Cool. That'll do nicely. That'll do, yes indeed. Then we got a shotgun. Shotgun seems like it's gonna be mighty useful. We got over here. More good stuff. Oh, we got tools. Fire tools level one. Love to see that. Let's go back over to that bench. I guess this is good a spot as any. Easy peasy. All right, let's go, Bill. Let's go find that car. Joel needs a car. What are you doing, Ellie? Bill's yeah, gonna yell at you. God, if you took anything. Hey, man, I don't need any of your shit. Trust me. Joel, you are keeping an eye on her, right? Like a hawk. place you got here well, if you got anything to confess this would be the place to do it Fez is dead we're not gonna say that though that's not the confessional booth that's my room all right I'm not touching anything Just there's two mattresses in here. That one's got nothing on it, though. Bombs note. Group of runners triggered most of the bombs in the south side of town. Time to do another pass. Don't forget to mark the map with all the bomb locations. Good call, Bill. I don't see a confessional booth, Bill. Right. Time to sack up. Ellie, come on. There's a school. All right. Ready? Guess we'll find out. <clears throat> Okie dokie. Oh, yikes. Oh, man. Yeah, come on. You don't need to be looking at that. <laughs> I've seen worse. All right, then. Yikes. We see little moments here. Let's get a move. Joel on. trying to take care of Ellie. All right, I'm going, Bill. <sighs> Past this gate, it's all new territory to me. I'm on it. <laughs> hey, hey, you guys hear that? Keep quiet. Oh, boy. Oh, Jesus. All right, nice and easy. Bill. In memory of Laura. No time to read. We got no time to read gravestones, chat. Oh boy. All 
I really love the use of making clickers have erratic movement. A fun fact, erratic movement is actually something that will increase people's anxiety. One of the reasons that we get anxious when we see things like wasps is and flies is because they fly erratically. It grabs our attention and it's unpredictable. Humans love what we can predict. And if these move erratically like this, it is way harder to predict them, and it increases the tension of a moment like this. So when things fly like that, it's by design, or move like that, not just in games, but like in real life. Go the other way. Don't come over here. Bill, get out of the way, Bill. God, could you be? Oh, man. Bill and Ellie are a little too heavy for heavy hooved for me. Jareth, what's up, buddy? Thank you for the raid, man. Guys! Hold up. I got a key for that gate. I guess we need he just shuts Ellie in. Runners. Easy. easy. Somewhere that the aversion to zombie movement might be due historically to help us avoid folks or animals who might be infected with rabies. I can see that. There's almost everything can be explained with evolution to some extent. You weren't kidding about this place, were you? And oh man, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> Steel toed boots. Now, apparently, we got steel insole boots. We got to make sure they're dead. Again, just remember, chat, we're putting these people out of their misery. These are people that are being tortured by a infection that they are basically the host for. Oh god, wait, these guys can see. Anybody else want some? Oh my God! Side effects. Side effects. Thank you so much for the seven months. I appreciate that, friend. Trey, what's up? Oh my God! Thank you for the raid, Trey. I didn't even catch that. Hello, hello, hello. Those of you coming along with the fabulous A Trey, thank you so much for popping in here and hanging out with us. I appreciate it immensely. Trey's a good friend of the stream. I recommend you follow her if you don't. Those of you coming along with Trey, hello, I'm Dr. Mick. I'm a licensed couple and family therapist. I have a PhD in human development. And this is Game Sessions with a Therapist, where we play cool games, talk about mental health, psychology, therapy, and more in an effort to destigmatize those things and bring information to people who wouldn't otherwise have it in a responsible and ethical way. I use games like The Last of Us to illustrate various psychological concepts. And uh, this is a spoiler-free run of the game, but we've had many conversations already about different aspects of the human condition through the game. I've also done it with Mass Effect and a couple others. 
So I ask that you please, if you're going to hang out, which I hope you do, I ask that you please avoid spoiling the game or asking questions about things from later on. Yes, I will play The Last of Us 2 after I play The Last of Us 1. Yes, I will play the DLC for The Last of Us. And I have played the game before, but I am acting as if I have not. Jirith, I also appreciate you bringing your folks my way. Um, that was very cool of you to do as well. So, welcome in, friends. Thank you for hanging out. We've been having a really good time playing this game. If you would like to see examples of me using the games to illustrate psychology, I recommend you check out my TikTok uh, in particular, but also my YouTube channel has all the VODs. So if you want to catch episodes one and two, this tonight is episode three. But TikTok has all the clips of me talking about aspects of the game and how they relate to mental health and psychology. So I encourage you to follow me there. Also Twitter, Instagram great places to stay in touch with the stream and we have a discord community full of amazing people so the scariest thing of, ha of erratic movements was silent hills pt yeah pt was really a cool game it's sad that that never really came to fruition this ellie can tank landmines very impressive um all right so we took those guys out. That was good. If you guys would give me a gun, I could help you kill some of these fuckers. Shut up. Just shut up. I mean, you're not wrong, but you're also an unknown variable with that, Ellie. Sorry. All right, we got more of these fine folks over here, huh? Oh boy. That was close. Clickers are what I worry about the most. Clickers are dangerous as shit. Alright, that was good. Now we can loot in peace. Need more stuff. Through those backyards. You got it, Bill. And do, buddy. All right, baseball bat with scissors on it. I'll take it. Hmm. And to anybody who stuck through the raid, thank you for sticking through the raid. And again, one more time, YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, thank you for watching it. Thank you for supporting my YouTube channel. Like and subscribe. Turn on notifications. I release videos daily, pretty much. Also, if you want to see a compilation of all of my Mass Effect TikToks, that video was posted. And uh, you can actually see every single psychological concept I illustrated using Mass Effect. There will be another one of those for Last of Us when we finish it. So feel free to check that out as well. This way. Ooh, yikes. It's tied on the other side. What about going through here? What, the doggy door? Well, it's not a bad idea. <clears throat> Very careful. Of course. Maybe you should have given her a gun. Okay, Bill. I was 
more of those clicker things inside the house. Hmm. One thing that I'll be curious to see is the way in which Joel's care for Ellie changes over time. I think there's an argument to be made right now that Joel caring about Ellie's well-being has more to do with Tess and more to do with the implications of the fact that Ellie seems to be immune than it does his own emotional investment in Ellie. And I think that over time, if he continues to engage with her in the way that he is and take care of her, it's going to unlock that part of him that sees himself as a caretaker. And we may see a softer version of Joel in terms of how he's telling her to take care of herself and maybe even trusting her because his emotional investment in her goes up. Right now, she's still cargo. I don't think that Joel can really bring himself to see her as a person yet. It will be interesting to see how Joel becomes conflicted if that starts happening. Oh, shit. I ain't seen this yet. Just stay down. Oh. More clickers. That's fun. We're just going to sneak right past them. Also, big shout out for Sean, Sean, Sean H. He does all the work on my YouTube videos. And if anybody watching this is a streamer on their own and is interested in having somebody put together some really cool video stuff for you, make sure you contact my man, Sean. His link is uh, at times in the description of my videos. All right, we're going to sneak around these guys. Quick, Ellie, practice your whistle, right? Oh, man. I do find it funny how long it takes the sun to go down in this segment. Oh my god, Bill! You can't do that to me, buddy. Jesus. I don't know. Do you think there's anything in this room worth getting? Very well-preserved teddy bear. All right, come on, let's get up. On the RV and over. Should be clear. On the RV, okay. Who the hell left us here? You got friends in town? No. Although I got some idea who might have come through here. School's on the other side of this house. Let's get inside. Come on, Ellie. I think we're good. Well, goddamn those things. Nobody's bitten, right? Nope. I'm good. We're all fine. Let's just keep going. I think we'd have probably said something by now, Bill, if we were bitten. Are you bitten? He's just being careful. Anybody want to go swimming? No? Okay. We'll deal with that later. Hmm. Another Maltov? Nice. Maltov cocktail just chilling on the counter. Y'all keep Maltovs on your kitchen counters? I think that... Joel! I think yeah. This, I think this house would benefit from an open concept, don't you? I'm gonna go upstairs real quick, Bill. Let me know in the comments where you store your Maltov cocktails. Am I doing YouTube right? Oh, jeez. Damocles rising. Boy's diary. 
October 4th. It's official. School is closed indefinitely. I guess this outbreak is good for something. No school equals no homework, which is fine by me. Now, what do I do with all this free time? I hear The Last of Us is coming out soon. You can play that game. October 5th. Mom and Dad were fighting. They were somehow yelling at each other while whispering at the same time. It sounded like Mom wants to leave. Go to her sister's. Dad says it's safe here, that the outbreak won't reach our town. October 6th. Dad yelled at me for listening to the radio. He says that the news is bullshit. Mom agreed with him while putting on a brave face, but I can tell she's scared. They both look scared. What is that hit close to home right now? I think Dad felt bad about yesterday. Gadget was asleep in my bed, and Dad didn't say anything about it. He came and petted him, sighed, and walked out. I've never seen him like this. October 10th. Dad was consoling Mom last night. Aunt Karen is dead. At least that's what I think I heard when we sat for breakfast. When, I, when we sat for breakfast, everybody was all quiet as if nothing happened, and I played along. Kids are perceptive, man. October 15th. Officer Jones stopped by and chatted with Dad. More like whispered with Dad. Lots of that going around these days. Afterwards, Dad told us that we have to leave town. We have to go to a new home. That the military will protect us. I'm only allowed to bring one bag with me, and Mom just sat there. October 16th. Where we're going, there are no pets allowed. We drove to the edge of town with Gadget. I took off his collar and let him go. On the drive back, Dad kept talking about how he'll be fine. He's meant to be free in the wild. Whatever. October 17th. It's time. Dad says we'll be back before we know it. I think he's full of it. Jesus. Makes you wonder how old that kid was, but... Man, Dad... You know, parents just trying to do what they can to keep their kids safe. And a lot of times parents thinks that, think that they can protect their kid through ignorance to what's going on. I think when shit's really hitting the fan and you're in crisis, parents do well to share a little bit about what's going on and to be realistic with their children about these things. Especially if you know that it's going to be something that's happening in the long term. There comes a point where child's ignorance to what's going on is actually detrimental to them because then they start to, again, process things egocentrically and in a very basic way. So you're better off giving them a little bit of information and helping them understand the context for why they're doing what they're doing, particularly depending on age. That kid writing that diary very clearly knows that something's going on beyond what his parents are telling him, and that can actually breed a lack of trust in your caregivers. When you know something's going on, and your parents aren't telling you. I think all of us could probably empathize with that to some extent, but if that becomes a repeated pattern, you start to learn that either your parents don't trust you, which is the egocentric way of looking at it, or that you must be stupid because you don't understand it, or maybe you're wrong. And you don't really want your kids in that spot psychologically. Panda Patrol. Hey, you got a second? Yeah. Yeah. I I just want to say I'm sorry about Tess. That's it. I, I won't bring it up again. Ellie, you don't need to worry about me. You should go check on Bill. Okay. You don't need to worry about me. Because I take care of others. My well-being is defined by how well you're doing, not by well, how well I'm doing. Also, Ellie checking up on him again is an act of connection. So right there, Ellie is initiating something that brings us closer. There's intimacy there. And we see Joel stop it and push it back. Which goes back to what we were talking about a little bit with the attachment, which is that he's going to see initiations of closeness as too much of an emotional scramble. And what he's learned is to suppress and push. Now, that's what I mean by saying over time, I'm going to be curious to see what happens. Because when he stops viewing Ellie as an object, that may become increasingly difficult to do. All right, Bill, what do you want, man? Give me a hand with this. What'd I 
I'll tell you. There's that truck sticking out of the school right there. Come on. There's oh, a bunch let's of them go. Try not to make a sound. Try not to make a sound. There's so many of them, Bill, and I got plenty of bullets, brother. Oh my goodness. Wow, it sounds like that woman is singing. All right, if this goes to shit, we'll deal. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to extinguish your song. I'm sorry. Remember, these people are are being controlled by the cordyceps. Oh boy! crap all right well that's dealt with i get how these people feel school has done this to me before too school lunch has done this to me what do you think would be the best way for somebody who naturally pushes people away to be more available and allow others to get closer allow others to get closer answer their questions look at it as being your problem that you're blocking people off not other people uh, Bill, and it, a lot of times it comes from a sense of trust, but recognizing that the people who have contributed to you learning that you need to suppress that and wall yourself off are not the people necessarily standing in front of you, right? Like Bill and Ellie are not the people who have contributed to Joel's sensitivity to closeness. It's, it's prior relationships. And so what he's learned in those relationships, he's translating into these. And it's that recognition. Bill and Ellie are not my wife, my child, my parents, right? Like that we, we misplace that context. And to build distress tolerance for it. Like you got to recognize that like if closeness is something that makes you uncomfortable, the only way you become more comfortable with it is to explore and let yourself walk into that pool a little bit. But only you determine how close people get. Like, otherwise you're, you, you can't ask people to do that emotional work for you, to try to push past your own boundaries and closed offness. You've got to open the gates. That would basically be like asking, if you were if you were guarding a castle, it would be like asking people to bust down your doors instead of just unlocking it and opening it up. It's going to be difficult, it's going to be scary, but ultimately it's going to be to your benefit. Run, oh, run. shit. Oh my god. Well, that's Ellie. More? Well, that was easier than I thought it'd be. They must be holed up somewhere else. Well, let's not test our luck. How do we get inside? Someone left a ladder on the bus. Here, get me up there and I'll drop it to you. Don't get killed up there. Thanks, Bill. She's probably safer up there than she is down here, Bill. 
We're okay. We just need to get to the hood of the truck. All right, well then let's do it. Oh, Jesus. They're coming. Move it, kid. Oh, God. All right. We're going to get in quick. We're going to get the battery. We're going to get the hell out of here. God damn it, they're locked. We have to get inside. Ellie, get, the battery. get over on, here. I got it. Windows open. Hurry. Go, go. Ellie, get out of the way. Jesus Christ, come on. That's not gonna hold. We'll make it fast. Grab this. Please tell me you're done. Tim? What? Fucking empty. Guys! Bill, where to? Uh, Bill, where? Anywhere but here. You made the whole ass. Come on. Of course. God damn it. Son, we'll sneak out the back. You two, follow me. I'll get us out of here. Be my guest. Turn your light off. You got full shivs? Yeah, you got full shivs. Clickers are easy to take out with full shivs. Oh my god, Skog, I would be too. That's terrifying. That's a runner. These lockers flopping around like this. There's a way through. Gotta get past those guys. Oh, man. oh god. Well. Clicker. Oh, shit. Holy crap. Thank God I had a shiv. We probably could take care of these guys. Oh 
Home run. Are so good. Help me open this. All right, ready? One more time. Come on. Yes. More on the way. Barricade the door. This ain't gonna hold up for long. That don't sound good. What? Oh, no. What the fuck is that? <laughs> Ellie, take cover. I got this. Holy shit, what is this thing? Oh, they just said it's a bloater. Oh my god. Oh my god. We gotta get up there. We can't climb these we the infected around. Infected for a long time. We call them bloaters. Bloater. Okay, got it. I hate to interrupt your little biology lesson, but can we get the fuck out of here, please? Yeah, I'm down, Bill. I just want to get on top of these bleeds. I just want to go in here and see what the bloater was high was protecting. Jeez. Baseball bat. Let's patch up. Grab another med kit. Okie dokie. Let's go, people. All right. Go. All right, come on. Assholes, come here. Down to the last one. Finish it off already. How do you know it's the last one, Bill? I fucking hate those things. Yeah, me too, Ellie. All right, you got him. Let's go. Come on up. Pull me up. Oh my god, more. This way. Oh jeez. Ducks here. There's another ladder over here. Keep going. Let's go. Inside the house now. So that worked out well. Okay, uh, I'll go check out this side of the house. Bill? Somebody had the same idea they stole my shit. Well, then what the hell is plan B? You ought to be thankful you're still drawing breath. That was plan A, B, C, all the way to fucking Z. And furthermore, tell Tess that she could take Don't this job. Don't you shove it right up nothing her nothing to do with... Jesus. What, you know this guy or something? Frank. Who the hell's Frank? He was my partner. 
He's the only idiot that would wear a shirt like that. He's got bites. Here. And he... I reckon he didn't want to turn, so he... Yeah, I guess not. Well, fuck him. Look what I found. It's got some juice in it. That's my battery. That fucking asshole. Get out. Get out. Okay. Jeez. Batteries drain, but cells are alive. Meaning? Meaning we push it, get it started, and the alternator will recharge the battery. Is that your guess? Look, you wanted a plan B. This is as good as it gets. What are you thinking? Thinking you drive and we push. Jesus. That's more of my stuff. So, first of all, that sucks, right? Another person dead that somebody we've grown to know cares about. You can watch Bill's progression and how he processes that. He sees it. First, he's shocked. Right? Heart drops through his throat or through his stomach. You see the instantaneous emotional input that he has no control over which is probably profound sadness joel jumps in with a bit of logic bill kind of brushes it off and then we see bill get angry we see it change it goes to anger and in that moment we see what bill was talking about back in his cellar happen in real time which is i can't bring myself to process this this is not something that I care to live with, that I care to attend to. I'm going to have to attend to it by myself because Joel and Ellie are really trying to leave. So I'm going to be mad at him. Anger is a really good emotion to put distance between. So we see Bill use cognitive circuitry there when he says, fuck him. He's mad. And it's sort of a secondary expression of emotion, given that sadness is really the initial one. But vulnerability doesn't fly here. We're seeing lots of that. Vulnerability just doesn't fly. People can't bring themselves to do that. Because it's Bill has told us that he sees that as a liability. He sees connection as a liability. And Joel, in that moment, has to confront the idea that this is what happened with Tess. If, if, if Joel was going to facilitate some connection with Bill here, which again, neither one of them really seems interested in doing. He might say, hey, Bill, I lost test two. And I'm really sorry, man. This shit sucks. But that camaraderie that would then potentially build between Bill and Joel by being vulnerable in that moment is the antithesis to them doing what comes theoretically next, which is parting ways. And so the logic there would be, why do we, why would we do that? Why would we choose to do that when then we have to carry that bond in separation? So we see constant double binds for folks based on circumstance. And it really makes you realize how privileged so many of us are to be able to bring emotion into our relationships because closeness and emotional bond is not really high on the hierarchy of needs, so to speak, when it's time to survive. So those are my thoughts on that. So what, I, I appreciate just, what you said, Claire. You're just going to steal my shit and run off? Is that it, Frank? You should probably search the house. I'm sure there's more supplies. That's a good idea. Damn.
Alright, let's go search the house. See what else is in here for us. I'll give you a holler. Ah, so this guy's got some long hair. So that's who was that's who Bill was in the pictures with on his fridge. And really sucks, man. Really sucks. But again, you know, death with dignity. Frank went out on his own terms. You know, people are starting to turn and you know it's coming you're you're gonna you know hopefully have a chance to take it on your own so in some ways we can look at that i'm not trying to be a silver linings guy here but frank did go out on his own terms instead of like something really awful like if frank had been turned and was in this house and then bill had to kill him that would mess him up note from frank Well, Bill, I doubt you'd ever find this note because you were too scared to ever make it to this part of town. But if for some reason you did, I want you to know that I hated your guts. I grew tired of this shitty town and of your setting your ways attitude. I wanted more from life than this than you could, and you could never get that. And that stupid battery you kept moaning about? I got it, but I guess you were right. Trying to leave this town will kill me. It's still better than spending another day with you. Good luck, Frank. Damn. Well, Bill did say that he ended the relationship. He ended it. He said, I can't do this. My emotional connection to you is a liability. And that would hurt. That would make a man angry. And one of the ways that people will sometimes process breakups is to channel that anger into hatred and bravado. So Frank writing that note very well may be indicative of the fact that he's hurt. He looks angry, but he could be hurt. We don't know what happened between Bill and Frank. But Bill told us, when circumstance arose, I bailed. I couldn't handle the burden of that. And so then Frank, seeing something like connection that potentially he strives for, seeing his, seeing his partner view that as a burden, would hurt at such a deep down in your core. This, per this person sees their intimate involvement with me as burdensome and the antithesis to survival. How can I take control of that? Because lamenting that is going to kill me because now I'm left to carry the burden of that. So I'm going to channel it into hatred. Fuck you, buddy. And so now you got two of them saying fuck you when I, I really, ultimately, they probably care a lot about each other. What a sad state of the world here, man. Ready? Hey, Widgie. Hello. Hello, friends. Those of you coming along with the fabulous head and welcome in. I'm Dr. Mick, licensed couple and family therapist. I have a PhD in human development. This is Game Sessions with a Therapist, where we play cool games, talk about mental health, psychology, therapy, and more in an effort to destigmatize those things, bring information to people who wouldn't otherwise have it in a responsible and ethical way. We're playing The Last of Us, a game that I'm using to illustrate various psychological concepts. I ask that you please keep chat spoiler free. I'm sure Widgie probably already gave you a warning, but I hope that you'll hang out with us and stay for a little while. Widgie, I hope you had a great stream. Thank you for, as always, for bringing your fine folks over here. Bill, I uh, found this in there and I, uh, I figured you should have it. Well, that's how you feel. Well, fuck you too, Frank. <sighs> Fucking idiot. You ready to go? I'm honestly kind of surprised that Joel gives him that. The only reason that I can think of of why Joel would give him that is because Joel somehow thinks that Bill seeing that is going to make him angry and potentially make it easier and more palatable to have seen what he saw. Like, there is some level of logic there, right? Like, hey, this guy didn't give a shit about you. He was angry at you. 
so what you saw in there is it shouldn't affect you so badly like i could see joel seeing that as a potentially viable option because joel sees distance as useful survival strategy so joel gives him that note thinking hey this might put some distance there too man this will help you clean it up this will help you close it up and survive because i care about you and i want you to survive and you carrying the burden of what you saw in there is going to probably hurt you more than help you want to be okay with this yeah not a problem you're doing a good job. I figured you should know that. I won't let you down with this. <sighs> oh, wow. Maybe that's the shift. So now not only have we seen Tess go, we see Bill struggling. You check in with Ellie, tell her she's doing a good job. It's also really good reinforcement because we do need her to know she's doing a good job. If she continues to doubt herself because I'm being a cold hearted man, um, that could actually be the antithesis to survival as well. But when you see a whole bunch of loss, having a bit of connection can really be helpful. Again, humans are relational beings, whether we want it to be, want it, whether we want to be or not. And maybe just maybe Joel seeing what Bill's going through makes him access a little bit of that warmth and desire for a relationship by checking in with Ellie and saying that to her. Hard to know, but certainly a hypothesis. All right, let's do it. Put her in first. Already did it. Of course, this is a manual. Keep your foot on the clutch. And when we get to... I know how to pop a clutch. How the hell do you know what? I don't care. Just don't fuck it up. All right, Ellie, get ready. Here we go. Now, now hit it. Come on, baby. Come on. Damn it. Perfect. Hey, good job, kid. Bill, not Hill. Ellie, we're going to give it another go. Stay focused. Hey, he's turning on Bill a little bit here. Okay, from the other side, you're See right. that? A little, little guardianship of Ellie. Bill, this ain't helpful, buddy. Reload, Bill. Come on. We're pushing. Keep pushing. Come on, baby. 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 Come Ellie, jeez, woman can drive. All right, this will do. Stop. Just keep her running, all right. That girl nearly got us killed. You gotta admit, she did hold her own back there. <laughs> you ain't gonna make it. Oh, oh. Here. What's this? You'd be amazed at how many cars still got gas in them. 
Appreciate it. Look, Bill, uh, about your buddy back there, uh, that's a tough deal. And I'm, uh, we square. We're square. And get the fuck out of my town. Joel gets a little taste of his own medicine there. Oh, man. Hey, what happened to sleeping? <sighs> okay, I know it doesn't look like it, but this here is not a bad read. Only one problem. Right there. To be continued. I hate cliffhangers. Where did you get that? Uh, back at Bill's. I mean, all this stuff was just lying there. <sighs> what else did you get? Well... Here. This make you all nostalgic? You know, that is actually before my time. <laughs> that is winter, though. Well, better than nothing. Oh, I'm sure your friend will be missing this tonight. Mm -hmm. it's light on the reading, but it's got some interesting photos. Now, now Ellie, that ain't for kids. <laughs> Whoa! How how the hell would he even walk around with that thing? Get rid of that. Well, hold Just... your horses. I want to see what all the fuss is about. Oh, why are these all stuck together? Um. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. Bye bye, dude. <clears throat> you know what? This isn't that bad. Why'd she try to get some sleep? Right. I'm not even tired. your seatbelt on, Ellie. Well, wh what about the guy? Oh, he ain't even hurt. Catch your breath. We're leaving.
And that's where we're going to leave it. 